Hi, my name is Adam Shakrud. Uh, I founded a company called Spring Health. It's a mental health company based in New York. We partner with some of the world's largest organizations and health plans to help them uh, get great mental health care to their employees or to their members. My background was in mental health. I came to the US to get my PhD. Uh, I studied at Yale and got my PhD in machine learning and psychiatry. Uh, and before that, I, I grew up mostly in England. My dad's actually Algerian. I spent a lot of time in Algeria as well, but grew up mostly in England. My background was in neuroscience, and so that's kind of how I, how I started getting into mental health. Depression is already the world's leading cause of disability, but then when you actually look at who's paying these bills, when people don't get better, they consume more visits. It takes longer to get better. They take time out of work. They take more sick leave. They, have, they may have to you know, pause their job. They may have to quit their job. And so the economic consequences of mental health conditions are, are pretty tremendous. And so we knew very early on, look, there's this, there's this problem. One in four people, one in five people are going to go through this problem every year. They're going to get a diagnosis of depression or anxiety or substance use disorder or whatever it might be. Many, many people are going through this problem. And when they do go in, they, they seek treatment and we don't know what kind of treatment is going to work. It's an extremely valuable decision, even though it's only a small decision. It only takes a few moments and it's only a specific point in time. It actually has pretty high financial consequences. And so that was when we wanted to found the company. We had this technology We'd proven at that point that we could help people make better decisions. People were more likely to get better if they took the recommended treatment. They were less likely to get better if they took a different treatment. It was working in many, many clinical trials. And so at that point, you know, the, the whole vision of Spring was like, let's take this technology and let's bring it to patients and let's figure out the best way that we can do that. The best way that we can help as many people get access to that technology as possible. Uh, and so it was actually in grad school when I had my first episode that was, that was pretty bad. Um, and since then, you have, to, you have to work pretty hard to, to maintain it. I don't think a mental health issue is for life, right? But it, in, to the extent that it's going to feel as bad as it does at the moment for the rest of your life. But I do think that it requires some conscious change and some systematic effort to change things in your life that are not working, right? Whether it's a lack of recovery, whether it's a lack of self-care, whether it's a lack of education, whether it's a lack of uh, learning, you know, specific triggers that there are in your life, not knowing enough about your own, your own self to have a successful life, to have a fulfilling life. And so I think... That, that, definitely, um, that definitely changed my own journey and my own appreciation of mental health to go through those experiences myself. And you know, now I have a coach you know, that I work on, on work things with, I have a therapist you know, that I work on a lot of relationship things with, I invest heavily in my own exercise. For me, physical activity is a, is a huge part of my own mental health journey as well. I have lots of you know, self-care things that I do, things like journaling before I go to sleep, things that I know, um, you know give me that you know, the, the kind of the mental fitness, right? Give me the energy that I need to be able to continue draining the batteries day after day. Founding a company is brutal. For the first five or six years, it was certainly seven days a week, long hours. You know, in the, in the early, early days, it was many, many late nights, you know, all night is no worries. You know, you, you're really running into the red just on the volume of work that you're trying to do, the amount of stuff you're trying to do, the amount of bets that you're trying to take, you're trying to test this out, you want to sell this thing, you want to build this thing, you want to tweak this thing, you want to, you know, there's, there's so much just volume of work. And that's before you even think about the mental pressure that you're under. How much runway do you have left? How, mu how much revenue do you have? How many employees do you have? You know, how far have you got? Who bought your product? Show me the logos. Pitch me the thing. Tell me what you do. What's your elevator pitch? Who's your investor? How much did you raise? Oh, you know, they raise more than you. Oh, everyone says that they're killing you guys, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like that's relentless and never stops. And that's the thing that really doesn't switch off. Like when I stop working, it's still in the back of my mind. You know, are you going to win this deal? Are you going to retain this employee? Are you going to retain this customer? This person, is this person going to quit? You know, it's that, that never stops. And so um, I don't think I could have done, I don't think we could have been as successful as we have been with Spring as founders if I didn't have all of that mental health education, if I didn't have a coach, if I didn't have a therapist, if I didn't have that like support, basically that support circle of professionals who are helping you learn what you need to learn to be able to do that. There are a million moments where, where, where you have a time to quit. And like, I truly believe that the one thing that a founder can actually bring to a company is just never quitting. There are so many reasons to quit, whether it's you just turned a $4 million customer, whether it's you lost another deal to your competitor, whether it's some investor has pulled out you know, post signing the term sheet and they pull out and now you don't know if you have runway to be able to pay salaries, whether you've cut your own salaries, all the founders are making no money for six months so that you can keep paying everyone else. There are a billion times where like rationally, you probably should quit, but like you end up getting in so deep, you're just not, you can't quit. You don't want to quit because like quitting, it's just not an option, right? For Especially for a founder, it's not an option, right? 
you have to be relentless around not quitting. There, are, there will always be in every successful founder's journey, there will be a million times where they thought about quitting, where they really wanted to quit. Maybe they even did quit. And the other founder like talked them off a ledge, you know, and said, actually, no, don't quit, you know? So for me, it's not like, there's not a specific moment because, you know, they, as you found it at the beginning, like the specific moments are like kind of small. It's like, oh, you had a fight. What are you going to name the company? Oh, should you, should you make the color palette this or should it be this? Should you build it on Rails or should you build it on Node? You know, like the arguments are like kind of small. The, the wins are really small as well. You know, you win a little local pitch competition, you make 25K, you know, it feels amazing. It's crazy, you know? And then the losses, oh, you had a fight and now you're really, you're really bummed out, you know? And, and those like the little oscillations, the good and the bad, you know, they start out pretty small and, and sometimes they don't happen that close. But the further you get, the wins and the losses get bigger. You know, as a journey, you like you have to you have to zoom out. You can't let the wins. You can't get that into the wins. You, also, you can't take the punches that bad. It's almost never as good as you think it is. And it's almost never as bad as you think it is. When you're winning deals, when you take this deal from your competitor, it's probably not as as good as you think. And when a customer churns or an investor says blah, 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 or your competitor launches this other product, it's probably not as bad as you think as well. And you do, in, you do have to really invest in, in getting better at dealing with those ups and downs because they get worse and worse. When I speak to, you know, we have mentors that are CEOs of public companies. They found they took their company public and now, you know, they're reporting on a billion of ARR or, you know, 2 billion of ARR and they have to grow from two to 2.5 billion. You know, the numbers are crazy and the, the wins are crazy and the losses are crazy. And, and overwhelmingly, they, you know, they always tell us like, you can't get rocked by this. You really have to, to be more resilient and to be able to, um, to take the highs and to take the lows, but not let it, not let it rock you too much. You know, I, I talk about this all the time in the company. We, we know that, um, that people who are successful at startups, like there's this analogy to athletes all the time. We want to hire athletes. We want to hire people that can perform at a high level for a long period of time. And, and internally, we've talked about this a lot. We have a goal to be the highest mentally healthiest and highest performing company. We want to hold those two things in harmony. And we say to people all the time, if you want, you, you can hire athletes. When you hire athletes, the, the athletes don't just perform at high level constantly, right? They're not just in the red zone running, you know, 10, nine second, 100 meters constantly, right? They're not. They, they have moments where they can go into the red. And then afterwards, they, they uh, have a very active form of recovery. And you need to hire people who can perform at that high level, that can sustain it, but also they can sustain it by, by knowing what recovery means to them. What is an active form of recovery? When you look at the, the fastest driver in the world, Lewis Hamilton, the best soccer player in the world, Cristiano, their recovery is not just chilling. You don't just go home at 8 p.m. and start scrolling Instagram. You know, they're doing cryo baths, they're doing ice baths, they're doing yoga, they're doing stretching, they're doing physiotherapy. Yeah, they have an incredibly active form of recovery, which is not chilling. It's different. It's totally different from just chilling. It's totally different from disengaging. And yeah, sometimes you have to chill out and go on Instagram or, or you know, do whatever it is to just kind of to disengage. But yeah, in general, when you look at the top performing athletes in the world, the people who can continue to push performance, the people who continue to, to have a high level of output for a long period of time, they have very active forms of recovery. And so I, I tell people all the time, like, look, you want to be an athlete. What is recovery to you? Like, yes, I want you to perform. Yes, I want you to achieve what you want to achieve. But what is recovery to you? Is it spending time with your family? Is it exercise? Is it breathing? Is it cinema? Is it, is it a uh, relationship? Is it your kids? Like, what is, what is recovery to you? And how do you make your, re your regenerative time uh, as useful as possible, right? Like you have this battery and all day, every day, you go out there, you're trying to win every deal. You're trying to create this crazy product. You know, you're trying to run really tight ops. You're trying to scale this company. And all, all the time, you're just dragging that battery down, you're dragging that battery down. Okay, well, in your downtime, how quickly are you recharging that? Like, do you, do you know what recovery means to you? Do you know what, what are the things that give you the energy back? Do you know what it, how do you maintain that battery? How do you preserve that battery? How do you keep it working efficiently? And I need to see that recovery plan. The recovery plan is just as important. You know, you can't just be running into the red 24 seven. You run into the red 24 seven, you're gonna get an injury. You know, you're gonna get burned out, you're gonna quit. That's not what I want. You know, I want people who can perform at a high level, who who have a strong internal motivation to achieve whatever it is, whether it's that they want to achieve impact, they want to achieve the mission, they want to get better at their skill, they want to uh, maybe they have financial goals, they want to earn a certain amount of money, whatever it is. But I also need to know that they've thought intentionally about their recovery and that they are committed to recovery in its most active form, right? Are they, um, you know, can, can, do I believe that this person has the capacity 
to recharge as quickly as, as they need to. Like I think April, uh, April's my co-founder, she's the CEO. She has like the best example of this. When she's off, she's actually off. She really is off the grid. I mean, if, if something went really wrong, I can still text her, but she archiving all of her emails while she's out. She's the CEO of a $2 billion company. And she also archives her emails when she's out. Because when she's out, she needs to be with, present with her family. She needs to be present with her husband. She needs to be you know, spending that quality time together. And that's what recharges her. It's not recharging if she's still checking email on vacation. It's not recharging if she still has her laptop around. It's not recharging if you go home, but you're still logged into Slack. It's not recharging if you, you know, you take a day off and you don't do anything with it, or you just do laundry or something like that. You need to really know what it is. What is it that drives you? What is it that recharges you? And, and the analogy to athletes, you know, I find it really helpful. I think people in general, they get it, you know, it's not just run really fast, run really fast and then go home. It's no, it, we're not going to do a long warm up. We're going to do stretches. We're going to get in the right headspace. We're going to we're going to run really fast. Then afterwards, we're going to do some more stretching. We're going to do an ice bath. We're going to go to a sauna. We're going to do whatever it is. You know, it's a highly physical um, example, but the same thing exists in, in business, whether if the challenge is mental. Community is interesting, right? Community is one example of a thing that can regenerate you, right? For some people, it might be sport. For some people, it might be music. For some people, it might be hiking. For some people, it might be uh, spending time with their family, with their kids, with their mom, with their siblings, with their friends. And so community is just one example of a thing that can give you energy, right? Uh, for me, it's important. For me, it, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's the most important. I have, you know, incredibly strong bond with my co-founder. I have an incredibly good relationship. You know, I am incredibly close with my mom, with my siblings, with my, you know, with my family. And so I have those, you know, the small number of friends and, and family who I'm very close with. And for me, that's enough. For other people, maybe they need more, right? And so um, community in itself is important because it's one of those things that you can do to regenerate. It's very person to person dependent, but it is important that you figure that out for yourself. For me, you know, I um, I live in Brooklyn, and, and the first thing I did when I moved to a new city is I, at the time, it was Meetup.com or whatever. There was an app called Meetup, and I go on Craigslist or I go on Meetup or whatever, and I find a group of people who play football. Usually, almost always immigrants, right? And you find all a, a, a small community. The community that was what the community was for me of people who play football, and so we play football every morning at 6 a.m. in in Williamsburg or in McCarran Park, and. And for me, that, that was my community. When you show up in a new city, you don't have anything. You're starting from scratch. In this case, not only a new city, but a new country. I wasn't even from America. And so community was incredibly important for me to find my feet, to have a small group of people who you have the same interests with. For me, it was playing football. Play football is great because then I have community and I'm doing exercise, which is helping me you know, regulate my own emotions, regulate my own anxiety. And so that, that was community for me. Just don't quit, right? Like I think if you founded a company, like, just don't quit. Almost certainly it's not as bad as you actually think. And maybe there's a point where literally everyone around you is telling you that there is no actual way back out and you really are backed into a corner here. But we felt pretty close to that many, many times. And I, I can tell you there's a million times where we probably should have quit and we didn't and we're still alive and things are going great. So it's um, every, just know as a founder that when you go on this journey, it will be mentally punishing and there will be a million times where you think you quit and all of the successful founders who make it through the other end, the only thing they have in common is that they didn't quit, right?